that's that's probably the only way people are going to see it as something big. You get right. me? Once it's shown on foreign TV, something of importance. You get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I realize that's the trend. I realize that's the trend. Yeah, that's the problem. You get me? So that's why I say I'm not going to just target Jamaicans. I'm going to try to target people abroad as well through the internet. You get me? Because a lot of countries, a lot of people rate the Jamaican culture. You get me? And I want to be able to show them it in different mediums. Yeah. Animation, comics, all of that stuff. You get me? We just need more abundance of it. You know? So. Right. So, um... Where like, where do you get your ideas from generally? And like what kind of work do you focus on? Well, I get my ideas hard to say because you know they're sometimes they're very random. You get me like I may be watching an animated show and like, yo, what if I did that? Or you know, I'm sitting down talking to my friends and we just have random ideas and it's like, yo, yo, dog, imagine imagine if I create this or or like something popular pops out and then my ideas just start going all about the place. So it's a random occurrence. You get me? I always have some random ideas that pop up in my head and I just decide to act on them. You get me? Because, you know, you, you may have people that have an idea that comes up and they're like, hmm, I don't know if they're going to like that. I don't know if people are going to like that. You know, should I post that? Hmm, I'm not sure. You get me? Me, most times I'm just like, when I come up with an idea, I'm going to just do it. Yeah, yeah. You get me? Because you have to work on it, else you're going to start picking it apart. And you'll never know if it was good or not. Yeah, I think that's very key right there. Like, mm-hmm. Just the difference between people who get somewhere and don't get somewhere. People who just dream and the people who dream and actually achieve. It's just okay. like, you don't think about, you know, what if you don't and all that stuff? You just you just want to create art and that's that's all you do and then what happens happens. Exactly, you get me. Yeah. But I can understand why people can get into a sense of oh you know, nitpicky and you know you're trying to be perfect. You get me. You're trying to make sure that this content is perfect, but at the same time. It's always going to be somewhere you're going to be judging yourself hard. You're going to be like, yo, is this good? Like, make sure this is this is something that creates a lot of impact. But at the same time, you just have to do a lot of do. You know, you have to do a lot. You just have to keep doing things. I feel like the more you sit down and procrastinate about something for it to be perfect, the more you're just not going to do it. Yeah, I don't I don't think Shensei did, did care about, you know, like an eyebrow a little bit too high. Exactly. You get me? <laughs> So it's legit like, cause even when I'm working on my comic, like there's a point where I was thinking so deeply about, you know, because you have to think about story. You have to think about character development. You have to think about, does this story even make sense? Will this even entertain people? You get me? So when I'm working on it, there are a lot of those things that pop in my head that cause me to not get the work done. But then I have to say, you know what? I need to just start this. I have an idea, write it down and work with that idea. And if there's any things I need to chip out of it, I make sure I type that in, but I continue working on it. Because once I start sitting down and looking at it and over over analyzing it, the more I end up putting it aside or wasting time on perfecting it. So, yeah. mm. so I have about two more questions. Um, Okay. So, like, as an artist myself and somebody who's uh, been teaching myself for a while, and for all the artists out there who are also trying to teach themselves, whether because of the money or because school is just like, you know, not really doing much, mm-hmm. um, how would you go about self learning in an effective way? Because a lot of people have the problem, even I do have a problem where it's like there's so much information out there. Mm-hmm. It's like, getting the right information in the right amount of time and just you know not being scattered and all that. How did you go about learning in that way? Well, um, honestly, there is it's 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 not it's complicated but not complicated because it's like there is a lot of content out there, you just have to stick to one thing. Like 
you'll have a YouTuber that you probably you probably type in how to how to paint realistic art pieces, and you see a lot of different things come up. You just have to go through them. You let me see which one, which person sound like them makes sense, or which one explains it more. You get me, and you stick with that subscriber. You just you subscribe, subscribe to them, see if they have tutorials. You say, all right, he explains this very well. I can understand him. I stick to that, or you just you grasp the information from different people. That's what I did. Like I legit just started looking up different things, like how to do this, how to animate, because I taught myself animation as well. You get me? And I just looked up how to animate, and you'd see the top um, YouTubers come up and you just click on a page and see all their pages and you end up looking through a lot of stuff and learning from those things so it's just to really stick stick to um to somebody you know just stick to and say all right i'll stick to these these two youtubers because you know they have they explain it very well or you just you know legit just look all about the place it doesn't matter <laughs> and like i feel like as long as it targets what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to learn then the cut of information is to your benefit. You get me? Because there are so many there are so many ways of learning one thing. You get me? And you just decide which one you want to do, which one you want to stick with. You get me? Cause you say you do you do motion graphics? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been doing that? Um I've been on and off about I left I started in high school, so about two thousand fourteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you do you do like you do like um logo animation movements and right. yeah, those kind of things. Yeah, pretty much. That's where I started up. Now I'm okay. adding more stuff to it uh, just to make it. Uh, like, so why so why you've been um I feel like I'm the interviewer now. Um, why why you feel like you've been why you've been on and off on it? Um. Well, when I just started out, I started out really strong and then I let people influence me with their doubts and fears about the industry and what they want. Mm -hmm. I guess I was doing, like I said, I went to college for something completely different and then that kind of overtake my life. Yeah. And then okay. uh, yeah, it was just hard to manage the time. So, I mean, I always tried to keep doing it. Sometimes I was inconsistent. I don't want that, but... Um, no, I'm really like going hard, going back into it, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah, just uh, teaching myself more. Trust me, I like, I can understand because like, there can be times where it's just like, you're tired or you know, you, you're consumed with so many other things that you, you, you forget about that one thing you need to learn because it's not like, it's legit like a hobby or it's legit like something where you sit down and like, all right, I need to practice this. And we can easily brush that aside. You can easily brush aside practicing something, you know, but it's just to really devote time. You get me like legit devote the time to it. Like you are in control of your time. You get me like, even though there are so many other things that impede on it, you once you set times are uh, like, oh, from this time to this time, I am doing this, or I need to devote two hours a day to this thing. You do it. You get me? Like, it's easy to go past that because, you know, as a creator, as an artist, you like to go with the flow with things. You don't like to really set, <laughs> set times and things like that. But just say, just say you're going to do two hours of this thing. You get me? Or set a day where you just deal with it. And it changes, you get used to that. You know I mean? so. so, I mean, I have this problem, and I think a lot of other artists have this problem mm. where people say you're talented, but then they don't want to pay for the talent that they just say they have. Um, That's true. Do you have that problem, or how you deal with that? Um, I had that problem at the start. Like, I've seen the growth because at the start, I was charging a certain amount for printed and they're like, why is it so expensive? <laughs> like, for a little art piece, I'm going to say, little art piece? Do you know the procedure that I go through to do these the things? The hours. The hours and the talent, you know, because not everybody can draw. You get me? Like, it's not something that anybody can just do. You get me? So, 
you just have to bring yourself as such. You see me? You legit, you can legit push away the people that aren't willing to pay and bring the people that are willing to pay. You hear me? I don't feel bad if somebody says, oh, you know, all right, that's too expensive. Um, I have room for negotiation, of course. You get me? I will negotiate and be like, um, I can do it for so and so, but I'm not going to go below a certain price. You get me? Because I know the value of my work. You get me? And I know how long it takes to do that. So over time, I saw people more and more getting accustomed to the prices because at one point I was... I was setting prices for animation because at the time, not a lot of, it seemed like not a lot of people were used to animation prices. I was like, yo, it costs this amount. And they're like, right, um, I'll get back to you. And you know, hear from them. You get me? But over time, like when they start seeing more animation work, yeah. they're like, hmm, okay. You know, and at sometimes you have to take a loss because you know that animation probably costs this amount. You try to do it for a little bit less because you know that that will get you exposure. Because I did um, the first full animation I've done, paid, was for bridging. He gave me like he legit had a dissertation to do. And he was like, yo, I want you to do an animation for me. And I was like, yo, I'm a bridging. I don't really want to charge him too much. You get me? So I legit gave him for a really good price. But I treat it as more of a way of exposure and content. You get me? And it, it, it was like when I finished that art, that animation and I put an ad on it, that's the thing. I put an ad on it on Instagram and Facebook and people were just like watching that and like legit like, yo, this is amazing. You know, I know where that is and stuff like that. And people felt a connection to it and that got me more work. You get me? That got me more eyes. So you have to know when to, to charge less and know when to charge more. You get me? So I legit learned from that. And legit the other day, I went to a launch, um, co-work launch, and I saw somebody and we were speaking and I showed them the animation. Like, you know, I do animation and stuff. Like, yo, they're like, yo, I've seen this on Instagram. <laughs> you know, I see, I've seen this around on Instagram before. I love it and whatever, whatever. And that created a link. So don't get too focused on getting paid the right amount at the start. You get me? Because as I say, you know your worth, but at the same time, you need exposure. You get me? So you have to pre that as a value. You get me? If I pre that as, all right, if I'm going to do this, I need to get the most eyes from it and just do it, you know, because you're going to get exposure, but at the same time, you don't want to underprice either because for too long because you don't want people to taking up your time for something that you could be getting so much more for. You know I mean? So it's just a balance. You just have to know when I went to do it. Yeah. So uh, when you started out and people were like, oh, yeah, that's too expensive, you didn't feel like you were, um, that didn't get you like down in a way, like you thought maybe, well, I could have just got this plan, but. I mean, at some point you're like, hmm, maybe I should have charged less. Maybe I should have done that. You start questioning things, but at the same time, I'm like, yo, honestly, sometimes I, I just go based on um, my good feeling sometimes. I'm just like, boy, I feel like I deserve this amount for this project. And I feel like if I'm going to do a project where I'm going to charge much less, I'm just going to, um, it's not, not going to be this one. You get me? Like, it's not, I don't feel like I should charge less for this one. It's, it's not as clear cut. You get me? It's not like I sit down and know exactly what, what decision to make for which client. You get me? Sometimes you, you mess up. Sometimes you don't. You get me? So I feel like I have made some good decisions, but at the same time, sometimes you miss opportunities. You get me? That's legit how it is. Sometimes you made the wrong decision or you think you've made the wrong decision, but I feel like those things always make you learn and those things always bring you to an opportunity where, you know, it always comes back like, all right, our next client comes around. And like, you know what? 
maybe in the head like hmm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them for this price and see how it go. You get me? And then it works out well. You get me? So it's just there's no rhythm to it. It just you just have to be aware that of what you're doing. You get me? Do you value the money more at that time or do you value the the reach and do you value the eyes you're gonna get at the time? Right. Yeah. So um yeah, pretty much uh that asks uh, most of my questions, yes. And you already spoke about, you know, a lot of you already gave a lot of key advice, but is there anything else that you would um, you know advise young artists on, you know, people in high school that are just starting out, um, you know, on how to approach uh, the market in Jamaica? Well, the advice I would give is start your personal projects. You get me like start as early as possible and just go wild with it. You get me like any idea you have, write that down, start it. You get me? Because I feel like there's a lot of value in creating your own characters, creating your own stories. You get me? As well as just, you know, as I said before, improving your craft, okay? just learning more. You get me? Just going on the internet, learning more styles, learning as much as you can. You get me? Because that's one thing that will help improve your art and just help you to help propel you in that field. So main thing, create your projects, your personal projects. Focus on them. When in school, focus on those. You get me? Focus on learning. Those two things, learning and your personal projects. That's what I feel like are the main things because you can always... You can always get a buzz from, you know, like, for instance, drawing a, per, drawing a, a famous person. You get me? Those things you can easily get up and probably do. You get me? Because you know that it's probably going to get a hype or a vibe. But at the same time, for the long run, you, creating characters and just creating stories and stuff like that is one thing I feel like Jamaica is lacking. Like, we don't have a lot of that. You get me? We don't have a lot of... Characters where you sit down and say, yo, this animated Jamaican character is iconic. You get me? We don't have any of that. So I feel like that's something I, f I feel a lot of people are afraid to do. Because they feel like nobody really cares. You get me? Like, no, there's no much, there's not much people in Jamaica that are interested in that. But look how much people go and go watch Marvel movies when they, when they come out. You yeah. get me? A lot of people. A lot of people are into anime. A lot of people are into Dragon Ball Z, all of those stuff. It's just to legit sit down and create more of them. You get me? Create more and flood the, flood the, um, the market so that people have options. Because, you know, there are a lot of crazy ideas out there just not fully developed. You get me? Yeah. So that's the advice I'll do. Yeah, that's real. Well, um, yeah, thanks for the realness today. You know, I hope you know, someone out there especially in Jamaica, you can hear some of these um, you know, advice, especially from someone who is living it right now. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, thanks for bringing me on this. You get me? Um, I hope I've also motivated you to like do your thing as well. You get me? Because I feel like I feel like you can legit just go hard at it and I'm waiting to see the progress. You get me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So we have been given the scientific knowledge, the technical ability, and the materials to pursue the exploration of the universe. To ignore these great resources would be a corruption of a God-given ability. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. <laughs>